Sorry, I'm a bit jet lagged. I've done no preparation, but I'm told that when I open my mouth, a lot of stuff comes out. Most of it uh, makes no sense. But, um, <laughs> so I wanted to do the ESCO for a long time. Um, I knew Colin had done it, so he was my inspiration initially, and I always uh, thought that I should do it one day. And, but it wasn't until um, I got with Chris Martin's group actually and uh, that Chris basically galvanised me and I think most of the other people here actually get off our asses and do it. So kudos to you Chris because uh, well, you got me doing it. That doesn't, do doesn't matter, you're the facilitator so that's alright. <laughs> um, my only, I was pretty happy that I could run it. Um, I wasn't really sure about 24 hours but I was happy that I could just do it. Um, I was worried about my navigational skills, which is what was basically held me back from doing it. That's what happened to your legs? Yep, that's <laughs> navigation skills. <laughs> so I, but I, um, I borrowed a GPS because I felt I needed a GPS and I tried to use it in e treks and I couldn't make head or tail of it. Um, then I remember that I had View Ranger on my iPhone and um, I found that excellent because I was actually able to use it because I'm not very technical. Um, so I loaded the map onto my iPhone and then I thought I'd recce the northern part. I'd done the Taro mountain race a few times and the, the Taro peaks. Um, I went up there one day and the weather was absolutely foul. Gale force winds, 20 metres viz, I couldn't see anything. And I used my, um, there's no way I could have navigated in that sort of weather barely being able to stand up with a map and compass. I would just found it impossible. Um, yeah, so I used this view ranger and it was sweet. And I thought, oh yeah, I know exactly where I am every time before I turn back before East Peak because I just could not get any further because the weather was so bad. <laughs> so I crawled my way back and um, yeah, so I was kind of more confident then that I could... That's a snapshot of the day. ...wrecky the bit. Yep. Um, so from then on, um, and I did one more recce with Paul where we made the fatal error of uh, not going all the way to Dundas to check out that bit where you have to take a, a, a bearing because we couldn't really be bothered actually, could we Chris and we're having uh, Paul having a nice lunch there. <laughs> so then it was just a matter of waiting to go and I was chomping at the book bit to do it. Uh, but I had to go away on a camping holiday with the family, which was lovely, but when there was really nice weather. And then when I came back January, it was just windy, windy, windy. And I only had a few days where I could do it, really, where I had transport available. And um, so Dave was good there because I went with him. Um, so we sort of decided that we would pick that windy Saturday, and I thought, oh, it's going to be it's windy. That's like a killer, you know, for a good time. But anyway, we went. Um, he started half an hour before me because we wanted, both wanted to do it solo, unsupported. Um, mainly unsupported because I just, I didn't know enough people to ask to support me and it's all organisation <laughs> and, well it's true, I just, it's all too hard, just go on your own and get it done, you know, so. Uh, that is my, one of my life's philosophies to be honest actually, um, I've learned you can't wait for people to hold your hand. If you want to do something and you ask people and they go, nah, don't do it, don't do it, that's too hard, don't listen to them. If you want to do something, just go and do it yourself, if you have to, otherwise you won't get it done. So I, um, anyway, I went up and I could just, hear, after I got to hear a pie hut, I just hear the wind was just howling and I thought, oh dear, this is, <laughs> um, oh, this is not going to be good, but uh, in, in time-wise, not going to be good. Because I actually find it quite exciting when the weather's really bad. I don't mind it, I think it adds more to a story. Um, anyway, I got my way quite happily actually to um, Dundas. I was pretty proud of myself, that was no worries. I took my bearing, got out my compass and took my, what is it, uh, Chris Swallow said 185 bearing. I thought, yep, I had my GPS. I thought, oh, this is exciting, I'm, I'm navigating on my GPS all by myself in the weather. I can only see 20 metres and it's windy and rainy. And, oh, so I took off, you know. <laughs> and then I um, went below the line on my GPS, below the ridge line. But at Dundas, uh, and bearing in mind you can't, I couldn't really see anything much. There was very little visibility. It was kind of wide and open and I had in my mind that the ridge was a wide open kind of a ridge, uh, which it wasn't. And so I kind of ran. I thought, oh yeah, I'm a couple of contours below the line and I'll just <laughs> I'll carry on. And I just got in a world of leather wood. Uh, bluffs and scrambling up and eventually I just thought oh, I'm going to have to climb up these rock faces or I'm never going to get back onto the ridge again. Um, 
So I started climbing up and then I thought I'll just check the GPS that I'm on the right track and, I, and it was gone out of my pocket and I thought, oh dear, <laughs> <laughs> word's stronger than that. Um, I thought, oh well, it's gonna have to go back down again. <laughs> so I went back down, I only went back down 10 metres and there was like a miracle uh, sticking out of a leather wood and I just thought, oh man, that's pretty, that's amazing. <laughs> anyway, I got back up onto the ridge and um, just saw Marta and Paul and I thought, oh, I've lost so much time. Anyway, I just took off because I wanted to be solo. I thought, I can't go near anybody. <laughs> So I took off and the rest was all actually fine. Um, uh, one little silly incident, um, I was rushing through Drac of Film. Um, sorry, my stories are really stupid. They're not very, um, <laughs> they're not very mature. But anyway, I had these soft flask bottles, which were excellent, might I say, ladies. Soft flask bottles are the way it is, they're really good. Um, anyway, there's cracks in the, in the decking near the tanks. So I popped them in there and I filled them up with one with electrolytes, one with perpetuum, and I can get them out again. <laughs> and I was in a real hurry, I went, oh, 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 oh. Um, Going on with the, yeah, not mucking around at huts, so, um, yeah, I had to kind of suck half of the innards out of them and then pull them out of this decking, and I thought, oh, that was stupid, like a monkey, you know, with his hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, it was all pretty good, basically, I was happy as Larry pretty much the whole way. Um, the weather was terrible, um, but Oh, yeah, it doesn't really worry me too much if you've got good gear. Um, this is what I took. A, it's an NGX Katmandu coat. It's heavier than a running coat, but it's still quite lightweight. I had not a word of problem with this, and it kept me warm the whole time, so that was awesome. It's my Tauru coat, so it always pays not to take a light running coat, I would say, into the Tauru's. Um, yeah, so I was doing pretty well actually I thought um, Paul caught me up and we, I, he ran behind me for a while um, I was a bit worried he might make me non solo <laughs> but, but it was all good in the end and yeah, it was great to see um, a couple of people at the huts and stuff uh, Powell gave me a beautiful coffee at um, Kime it's just like the best uh, coffee that I ever had um, and then I ran down, yeah, just down Marchant Ridge and it was, see the full moon and it was, yeah, it took me ages longer than what I thought, but yeah, it was all good at the end. I was pretty stuffed. And just for your information, so what I took was, um, food-wise, um, like Lou, when I'm training I, I eat proper food, um, but I find for, if you want to run quick, you, if I'm running quick as I can, I usually have um, a gel an hour and perpetuum which I've started and it's sort of like a base nutrition I found that really good no no lows at all basically it's just even pretty much and and now I just have sandwiches fruitcake banana etc and keep hydrated and that that's worked pretty well for me over the years so yeah that's about it <laughs> that's great. good Thank you.